Hello. Welcome to Fractal Teaches CS. I'm Kate Fractal, and today we're going to be working in Twine and learning how to change your fonts, um, your formatting, or the color of your text. These things can really help your story come alive um, and be more exciting visually. Uh, we're also going to learn about macro syntax, which is sort of a key feature of Twine. Now, if you've already worked with macros, uh, you can jump to uh, part two of this video series, the next video, and that will show you, uh, jump right into like some examples of how do we do this. Um, if you haven't worked with syntax, stay here. So the first thing I want to do is show you an example of what formatting can look like and what kind of things you can do with it. Uh, so here's my example. You've received a letter from your cousin Eloise, the name sort of bold, highlighted. Um, we have uh, some uh, unknown inscription, different characters. Eloise's name is purple. I'm sure the letter is real because only Eloise signs her name in a different pen color. Um, and there's some choices for a story, but of course um, they all actually just take us here because there's not a story here. This is just some examples and actually some more examples. Um, so we've got some different textiles. There's a whole bunch of those. Um, we can have some different colors of text. There's a lot of different colors um, and some different fonts. So uh, let's see how this works. So I'm going to go back to the code. And because we have a sample of code, we can actually look at that code and start making sense of it. Um, so if you look at this, uh, you, you probably notice that there's some things that are highlighted, and then if I click on those, I actually get some stuff that's like underlined. Um, you may see that there's like more punctuation symbols than you might normally expect in a story. Um, these parts that are underlined or highlighted, that's the computer is telling us, hey, this is something that's relevant to me. I know what this is. This is syntax. This is something that I care about, and I, as the computer, am going to interpret. We're going to dig into that syntax now. So here are three examples of formatting macros. Um, this is a good time to take um, like 30 seconds and just look at these. See what you notice. See what's similar between the three of them? What's different? What do you think the key features are? You can pause the video and do that. Um, OK, welcome back from pausing. We're going to go through this um, from left to right. and talk about all these details. Uh, you'll also be able to look above me at the keyboard, and that'll show you where the keys are, uh, at least if you're using a QWERTY keyboard, um, so you can find those for the special keys. So the first thing is these parentheses. We have an opening parenthesis right at the beginning. We have a closing one partway through. Um, I think of the parentheses as working like English. They're an aside. They're an aside to the computer. This is something that I'm saying not to the player who's playing my story, but to the computer, um, who, uh, which needs to know this is, this is a command for me. Um, so every macro starts with the parentheses. You can find those, um, shift nine and shift zero. The next thing that happens is the next thing we see is the macro syntax, the macro name. Um, what is it that we're telling the computer to do? Are we telling it to adjust the color or the font or the text style? Uh, if you know the name of the macro, um, you can do a lot of stuff with that. That's like the first thing you need to know is what's the name of my macro. Um, after the macro, we have a, a colon. Um, that's uh, next to L, and you have to press Shift to find it on the keyboard. Um, this is just a separate. It's saying I'm done telling you what the mac what macro I'm using, and next I'm going to tell you some things about how to use that macro, right? Because if I'm choosing to say change the color of this, I need to tell the computer what color to change it to. Like should it be purple or should it be pink or, or magenta or blue or turquoise or yellow or right like there's a lot of possibilities there um and so we tell it that with the parameters so the parameters right our first parameter here is purple 
The parameter for font is skia, which is a name of a font. The parameter for text style here is bold. Um, these parameters are in quotes. Um, usually that's going to be the case, sometimes not. Uh, these macros only have one parameter, like which thing is it? Uh, sometimes in the future you'll see some macros that have more than one or, or none at all. Um, but, you know, these ones have one. What is next? Ah, uh, square brackets. Should be familiar, right? Hopefully you already know where the square brackets are on your keyboard um, because you've been using them for links. Um, we do an opening square bracket. So these square brackets are telling the macro because we're changing some text. What text should I change? Um, what is this thing that's going to the player, but uh, you know I'm going to make it look different before I do that? Um, and that text plus the square brackets together are called the ho a hook. Because the macro is hooking onto it and saying, oh, I got this. This is my thing to be attached to. Um, so this is all of the elements. Uh, some macros don't take hooks, um, but our formatting ones do. So every macro, parentheses, macro name, a colon, and then a closing parentheses. Um, usually a parameter or more, um, and usually a hook, but not always. Okay, so that's sort of how the syntax for this works. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is show you some examples. So tune in to the next video to see the examples of how this works for um, fonts and colors and textiles. Um, there. Have a good day.